Welcome to Contextual Electronics. My name is Chris Gamel. Today we're going to be going over 3D models. And 3D models are something that I really love about uh, KiCad 5.0 and I think 4.0 as well. But basically it's gotten a lot easier with the step import and with the ability to immediately look at stuff in a 3D view. So we'll definitely look at that here. And then also the work of the librarians in the KiCad project has been super, super helpful because a lot of the times when you put in a, you know, one of the library components, the, is say a resistor, like an 0805 resistor, that is automatically places the 3D 3D model, and that makes things a lot easier. Now, that alone is a good reason to use the library components, but that's not always going to be the case. Sometimes you're going to be making your own footprints, and we go over that a lot at Contextual Electronics. But let's take a look at the uh, what we can do about this when we don't have an actual 3D model available. Right. So this is a simple little breakout board that I created for uh, a previous version of the course. And really simple, right? Uh, uh, two capacitors and a motor driver. Uh, this, is, like I said, this is an older version of uh, KiCad, so I actually don't have uh, the 3D model for the capacitor in here, right? So what we can do is we can actually this is an 0603. We can go and find the existing 3D model, and so there is within the entire uh, library. So if you have trouble finding where it is, first off, you can go to your uh, your KiCad library stuff, so you can see C, C pro, I mean Windows, C program files, KiCad share, KiCad library. That's where we are right now. That's where we are in this entire hierarchy here, and uh, and then so this is actually all of the packages, right? You see the dot pretty extension means that's the actual footprint themselves. And then for some reason though, there is a packages dot 3D is within that, so you have to find that within that overall library thing. And then you see there's another subdirectory here. So what we're going to do is go down to resistors, SMB. And then you just find the one that we're looking for here. So step, there we go. Make sure it fits up well. Looks like that fits great. What I'm going to do is also uh, remove the, you see there's actually the, the one that was initially here. I'm actually going to delete that. I'm going to go and copy this then. Because when I'm doing multiples at a time, uh, I want to basically be able to quickly go in and swap what that was. OK, come on. Uh, no? What did I do there? I'm just trying to get this component. Here we go. Okay, so I'm going to delete this one now, and then I should be able to just say plus, and now that I have this open thing here, I should be able to paste this in, and there we go. So it should just show up now. It did not show up. Let's try turning the preview on and off. Does not like that one. Okay. Well, we can go and do that as well. Oh, I added a one on the end there. <laughs> okay. All right, there we go. And so now we have that one in there as well. And if we go back to this, you have to actually go and click on the uh, the 3D model for it to actually update. So that's important to know. Well, it looks like I actually moved this. Uh, man, my grid is huge here. Right click, change the grid. Oh, wow, that's a big grid. All right, let's, uh, let's see what happened here. Zone outline. Looks like I moved one of these zone outlines here. No, that one looks OK. Anyways, I haven't used this board in a while, so I'm not sure what's going on here. Let's see. There we go. OK, I didn't hit B. OK, so um, we now have that. What we want to do is, is the last one here uh, is this the center pad in the middle. right? So if we mouse over this one, we see that this is a, uh, the footprint is down at the bottom here, PWSON N8. This is one that I actually created. So you see it's in actually the GoGoGo Go Go library, which is the, the project library here. And so uh, I'm going to go in and just try and find a 3D model that kind of fits this. Uh, so I'm going to say open a folder. I'm going to go close this resistor folder. And then I'm going to go to packages, SON. There we go. So that's an SO, no lead. So uh, I think that there's, let's see. So we're kind of doing it based on just guessing at this point. But I'm going to put in just a, a random SON package, right? So an uh, eight pad, eight pad two by two. Actually, we're going to go even. Well, we'll go eight pad two by two SON. Uh, no, let's actually change that. I, wa I want to show something a little bit different here. So let's go much bigger. So there we go. So we're now we're, we're too big, right? And this is something that I do uh, often. That this is the real thing I wanted to show here. So you see that we're first off we're rotated. So the first thing we need to do is actually go and rotate this entire view. Let me see if I can make this a little bigger for you here. Um, so I want to rotate this entire view. Right now, we're, the pads are left and right, but we're a little bit off there. So I'm going to rotate this so that matches what we're looking at there. Usually, it's you know fraction or in in uh, quantities of 90 degrees. And also, you can only go in one direction. So if you get to 180, you're going to have to go back the other direction. It's minus and plus 180. Okay, so now we're a little bit too big here, though. 
And so what I'm going to do is actually shrink this thing down. And this is actually what I wanted to show here, is that I often find that I am uh, redoing my 3D models and just borrowing packages like this. Now, the actual SON package is, is a little bit different of a, uh, <coughs> the pitch of the component is a little bit different here. But all I'm trying to do, and, and what I'm really trying to show here, is that you can take, if you're kind of in a hard spot, and you want to just get something in your 3D model, maybe not the most accurate thing, but something in your 3D model, you can usually grab an alternate component and then redo it, uh, re repurpose it using the scale factors here. I'm not saying this is the best solution. Usually the best solution is to go and find a 3D model online or to go into a 3D CAD program and create one yourself. That is a pretty top-heavy process. You need to, you know, first off, learn a CAD program if you don't already know it, or go and find all these different things. So I've found that I often, you know, if I have something that's close to another package and I just need to have like a black square, which is effectively what this is, then I'm going to do that. I'm going to hit OK here. If I go and update, looks like my outline's not good. And you see, this pretty much approximates what I'm trying to do here. Obviously, this is a much simpler example. And you see that the pins do not line up. So that's another concern here. But that's because I'm scaling an existing component. Uh, if I was making my own component, I would obviously match match the pin width, or sorry, the pin pitch as well. Uh, but this is just kind of a little hack in order to get some, something in your 3D model, because sometimes it's nice to have something in there rather than nothing. And that's something that I find, especially as I'm making a lot of uh, new components at the beginning of design, uh, I, I don't necessarily want to go back and forth with all of the 3D stuff right away. Definitely something over time, is, especially if I'm working with a mechanical engineer who needs to know exact package heights, that's something that I will definitely do as well, but maybe not right at the beginning of the project. So this is a quick little hack in order to get more packages into your uh, 3D model and uh, without having to necessarily 3D model them all yourself. Like I said, there's also download sites online. There's uh, GrabCAD and uh, uh, Snap EDA and, and similar things out there. 3D Content Central, I think, is another one too. Uh, but basically, if you just search for a thing that's you know the package name and then 3D model, usually you will see a bunch of stuff. You're going to have to put your email address in for a lot of the vendor sites as well, just to, so you know. Uh, and uh, but that can really help to to spice up your designs and and having 3D models is really useful for you know making an overall product, starting to manufacture a thing, or even just communicate with the mechanical engineer and say, hey, this is what I've got going on. What it, you know, how, how are you thinking about integrating this thing? So those two things together can be really powerful. So I hope you found this hack useful. If you have any other thoughts, you can always go and uh, check out our forum. That's forum.contextualelectronics.com. This project here was from contextualelectronics.com, a previous version of it. And we have more projects like that where we teach you how to build electronics and motor drivers and everything else all around it. Uh, so check that out, contextualelectronics.com. That's all for now. We'll have more videos soon. Thanks for watching.